Hello, amazing people. Welcome back. Live to Inspire podcast. As always, yours truly, Dave Coleman. Um, today's episode is, I was going to talk about preconceptions and prejudice, uh, but for me, I just sat here, I've procrastinated about it sort of all weekend. Um, I've done some research and some reading and some, I don't want to say soul search and some thinking about, about the topic um i think i discussed the the prejudice uh area previously but for me preconceptions and prejudice almost go hand in hand so um this is going to be a bit of a freestyle uh and a sort of dissemination of current thoughts and ideas around the areas um so initially my my thought process started with with prejudice, um, I've been at the the brunt end of prejudice from from people that were close to me were close to me, um, and it made me think about the word itself and where where it's applied. So in this case, it's as as the word is written, prejudgment, pre prejudice to prejudge someone or a situation, a scenario. Um, now, why would we do that? Why would we prejudge someone? Uh, and this is where my thoughts were going. Um, and it links with, with preconceptions. So a lot of the stuff comes from, from social media. It's it's huge part of our lives these days. Uh, coincided with the media. And also experiences, right? Past experiences and events uh, I alluded to in a previous episode about how those experiences can um, help us to learn and grow. So with that mindset, the growth mindset and regrets and um, oh, what was the other one we were talking about being the expectations, a thief of happiness. If you have a preconception or a prejudgment, it could lead to a prevention of or managing of expectations uh it could lead to the same with regret that you wouldn't have any regrets because of past circumstances and events that you have experienced would create a learning pathway that allows you to preconceive a plausible outcome uh, also, the same with with the prejudgment. You would would judge someone or something based on similar events that you have experienced in your life, um, similar scenarios that may have cropped up again, like I said, on on various media platforms. And from that, you would then formulate your own judgment. Um, now, it takes my my mind to the film Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels where I think Vinnie Jones uh, made a, a statement, a quote from the film about assumptions. They are the mother of all fuck-ups. Um, it's a strange one. It's a powerful term. Um, assumptions are the mother of all fuck-ups. So is there a preconception? Is there a prejudgment? Uh, yes, I think we all do it subconsciously. Um, is it an assumption? Dare I say it? Yes, I think quite common uh, that we would make an assumption that then formulates a prejudgment or a preconception. Uh, so we assume a plausible outcome. Um, and, and this is something that I've struggled with, struggled with personally because because people have formulated prejudgments and preconceptions about events and circumstances. It's uh, it, it's really hard and, and at times can be soul destroying for for certain people um, because the people that have formulated these judgments or conceptions, can, their, the ideas that they have conceived in their heads uh, may not necessarily be true or they are without fact, um, which is quite common, which is more most commonly the case uh, as, like I said, is the same with assumptions. Um, so again, that led me to to doing some more research and some reading and thinking about this 
this sort of area because I, I feel like we can all be exposed to it at some point um, we can all be the victim of it at some point um, and how do we deal with it so there's there's three sort of things I listened to a Jordan Peterson discussion and Jordan Peterson said that there's there's three I don't know what you call them really basically he said there's a truth a lie and an anti-truth um, I'm not really 100% on what these all are um, obviously truth is a statement of fact a lie is not fact <laughs> um, and an anti-truth is something that potentially is somewhere between a lie and the truth I guess um, now are we composing anti-truths truths in our minds that lead to the formulation of prejudgment and preconceptions? Um, I'm not saying there's right or wrong answers with this, by the way. I'm just disseminating thoughts and ideas to, to evoke um, ideas and, and different perspectives potentially in you guys if... If anyone's listening, if anyone's listening, I have no idea. Um, so, this is something that uh, a conversation I had with a counsellor, and or a similar one anyway. They said, who you are versus what you have done. Now, with the world of social media, who you are versus what you have done what is it that people or who I should say who is it that people see who is it that um, people interpret you to be um, again the, the, another similar question is how do you see yourself versus how do other people see you um, because if, or if because if there's there's a trap I feel where people can continually perpetuate that cycle of who they want people to perceive them as versus who they actually are how how do how do you feel who who is the real you you know what what are your beliefs what are your values um if people do not align values with you is that something that then causes prejudgment and prejudice from them or from you could be either way um so for, <laughs> sorry the just tangent bear with me um so th this is a question i wrote down do you really know people or have you made your own opinions based on what you see or what you have been told i'm just gonna say it again because it, it, it I, I find it quite powerful do you really know people so do you really know me? Do I really know you? Uh, or have you made your own opinions based on what you see, i.e. social media, Instagram, YouTube, whatever it is, um, or what others have told you? Now, I would argue that if you are, if you feel you know someone based on what other people have told you, are you formulating your own judgment or is that effectively... Uh, an opinion that is disseminated from someone else's prejudgments or preconceptions um, because they may not know the person themselves. So it's then almost like third or fourth hand prejudgment, um, preconceptions around the personality or the behaviour traits of an individual. Um, so for me, one of the interesting ones is, again, with, with social media, do you formulate opinions based on based on what people choose to share now i think that's really powerful what you choose to share what you put out on social media the the content that people are sharing is that a reflection of that person is that a reflection of their values and their behaviors their their personality or is it for business is it um it could be anything could be anything i don't really know <laughs> um so yeah just i would err on the side of caution before making a judgment or a, a preconception around 
a person or their values and behaviors and personalities. Um, so this was something again where I was I was listening and I was doing some research. Obviously, um, I feel like this is a statement of of fact. Um, so it would be a truth. Um, we have all made mistakes. That's it. We have all made mistakes. Um, I'm yet to meet Mary Poppins. Um, I'm still searching for a unicorn. Um, <laughs> Who knows where they are, if they exist, who knows, but you've got to keep the dream alive, right? Um, we have all made mistakes. Warren Buffett, one of the, the biggest, bestest, baddest, most sweary investors, um, if you look him up on YouTube, he'll always be swearing at you and shouting at people. He's very, very almost passive aggressive or even just aggressive. Um, he was one of his comments was was around making mistakes you know um the the 10,000 hours or the 10,000 rule of you know keep trying keep trying if you make a mistake or if you fail it's you can rephrase that again the growth mindset I'll keep going on about it it is the, the, the failures are learning opportunities okay so so something went, went wrong you made a mistake you have the power and the mindset, the opportunity to learn from that mistake, that learn from that failure. If you messed up, there is nothing wrong with going, actually, you know what? Yeah, I messed up on that one. I'm really sorry about that. Or I know in myself I shouldn't have done that. Or perhaps there's another way I could have acted. Or who knows, whatever the situation, the circumstances dictate, there's always an opportunity to learn from that. Um, and that ultimately makes us into to better people as we move forward. Um, the my my research took me down to down down to oh dear down uh, the the root of stoicism. It's quite popular at the moment. Um, I did have a little book, the Daily Stoic, just gives you a quote and a sort of explanation around it uh, for every day of the year. I left that back in the UK, but something that, that cropped up was when is the best time to plant a tree 20 years ago or today there's two times right that is the best time to plant a tree 20 years ago or today and that then for me feeds from you know making a mistake i i should have could have planted a tree 20 years ago and i could have re reaped the rewards from that i could um I could sit under the sh under the tree uh, and sit in the shade and read a book and, and all those lovely things. I could eat the fruit from it. But if I haven't planted it, it's never going to happen. So the next best thing is to plant the tree today. Make that change. Like Michael Jackson said, <laughs> man in the mirror, make a change. There's plenty of opportunity to do it. And like I said, with, with formul formulating your own preconceptions and prejudgments, step away from that make sure you can see the bigger picture with things make sure you truly truly understand someone some things the situation the scenario the environment the problem whatever it is that someone may be going through because if you ask yourself how would i deal in that si deal with that situation the chances are it may be the same or you may be in a position to offer that person some advice and some additional support, a different perspective perhaps around solutions. So it's a, it's a strange one. I do appreciate that. Um, there's two more bits I kind of wrote down, um, perpetuating from, from this sort of thought process. What's hard for you isn't always bad for you. Now, that's that's a it's <laughs> a hard pill to swallow. Um, it, it's almost uh, like a sour grape, right? It's it's a uh, what's the word? An inconvenient truth. There you go. That what's hard for you isn't always bad for you because you know what uphill struggles. One of my friends gave me a picture. Uh, the best views come after the highest hardest climbs. Um, 
are you a you are you you are <laughs> Uh, a better person after having made mistakes, after having failed, after being challenged, after going through adversity, you will come out of the other side of that as a better person with a greater emotional quotient, with more experience, more to offer people, all those things. Um, I know I've been through some, some adversity and it has been hard. Like I said, I, I've openly admitted now I feel comfortable to sort of state in a public forum uh, that I've had counselling, I've had additional support. Excuse me. Um, friends have been around me. Um, even the odd message. Um, you know, just check in on someone. You never know what someone's going through. Um, so that's that's one of those uh, what's hard for you isn't always bad for you. And the last one, um, I spent quite a long time trying to get my head around this. Do not punish behaviour you wish to see repeated. Again, it came from Jordan Peterson. And, it, and he explained this in, in this scenario. You, you've got yourself a partner, you're going out on, on date night, and, and obviously you, you put your best kit on. And then... You actually realise, looking at your partner, that that perhaps they're above you, perhaps they're they're better looking than you. There's a few insecurities or social anxieties kicking in, um, and and you would be concerned that you might lose that person. Uh, obviously, it's animalistic behaviour. So you would say to that person, you know, you look really good, but I'd I'd appreciate if you didn't look that good again, almost. So effectively what you're doing or what Jordan Peterson was saying is that you're, you're punishing the behaviour um, by, or by punishing that behaviour, you will see it repeated because, again, my interpretation of that is that it creates resentment and animosity towards uh, the other individual and the situation. So why would you? Why would you? change like if that's who you are and again going back to what i said earlier do you really know people do you really know who you are who they are have you formulated your own opinion is it from truth what are the sources um or have you formulated an opinion based on what you see what you want to see what you choose to see um so it's it's an interesting one uh, i don't quite know what the answer is um, other than really the fact of if you do make a mistake if you have formulated a judgment or uh, a conception around someone or a situation uh, an, em an environment um, it could be linked with expectations uh, you may have made an assumption um, but take a step back take a step back from that assumption take a step back from your, your prejudgments and think about, like I said, where have you, why have you formulated these opinions around someone or something? <laughs> um, and, and do you know it to be fact? Do you know what that person's going through? Could you offer them some support? Um, it is tough. Uh, and as always, we will get there. If not immediately, eventually. Take care.